Hi, and welcome to part 3 of your 5th Xcode programming tutorial. And today, we're going to be looking at UI sliders. So let me show you what they are. Open up Xcode, and as usual, let's create a new project. I'm just going to create a single view application and call it Slider App. Create your app, and then we're going to head into our storyboard file, where we're going to drag in a slider and a label. I'll explain why in a moment. So in your objects panel, find the slider. It's right next to the switch and the text field, and it's like the UI progress view. However, it has a thumb track in the middle so the user can actually adjust the value of the slider. You'll notice it immediately. You've probably seen it in apps used as a volume control, the current position in a music file, you'll see it all in all sorts of things. And it's really useful to know how to use, and it's quite simple. It's got three main properties. The actual look of it, like the colour, whether the user is able to interact with it or not, so whether this thumb tint here can be adjusted by the user or whether that's all done programmatically, and the value, so what's the current value. Right now it's in the centre, so the value is 0 0.5. You can change the minimum and maximum possible value. For example, I might want to generate a number between 0 and 100, so that I could have the minimum 0 and the maximum 100, and then round up decimal numbers. Let me show you what that would look like. So type in for maximum 100, and the current, let's make it 50, right in the middle. Then I'm going to drag in a label. What we're going to do is, as the value of the slider is changed, we're going to display the value of the slider in the UI label. We've done something very similar to this in our segmented control and UI switch tutorial, which were the past two tutorials that you would have seen. Since the current value of the UI slider when the application loads is 50, let's make the current text of the label also 50. So you're probably thinking, I want to customise my UI slider. The blue and the white's kind of boring. So let's do that. I'm going to keep the maximum track tint, which is this part of the UI slider, white, because that looks good and it's clear to the user that that part is not filled up. I'm also going to keep the, th track t the thumb track tint, which is the little circle that the user can click on and drag around, white, so it's easy to see. But I'm going to change this blue. So in the side, under the slider menu, in the properties viewer, let's change minimum track tint to yellow. You can change it to whatever you want. Then open up your assistant editor. I'm going to click on our slider and right click and drag. But you'll notice we've forgotten to do something. We need to put a curly bracket after the add interface line just so that our IB outlet works as we want it to. We want it to be an outlet, a UI slider and the storage type strong. I'm going to call mine slider. Then we need to create an outlet for the UI label so let's do the same thing except make sure the type is label and I'm going to call it label. Then, again, we're going to right-click on our UI slider and drag it underneath the curly bracket. Select the t connection to be action and the event value changed. Make sure the event is value changed. Type ID, argument sender, and I'll call it slider changed. Let me explain why we've done all of this. We need an outlet for the slider because we need to get some of the properties of the slider, specifically the value. As the slider value is changed, we're going to run this action. And in that action, we need to be able to say what's the current value of the slider. So we need the outlet for it. And we need to change the label's text. Therefore, we have an outlet for the label. So now we can go into our viewcontroller.m file and start adding in some code. Inside our slider change method, we need to set up label.text equals square brackets ns string string with format and then leave that blue box close the square brackets and put a semicolon let me explain why we've done that normally we'll type label.txt equals at talking mark talking mark and type the text we want but in this case we don't want to just display some set text we need to display text and a number the numbers different to text there's a few types of variables but the main two are numbers and text so a label has to have text, so we need to convert the number into text and we need to display it alongside some other text. So we could type in here at talking mark talking mark and then current value and then put the current value in. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but for now let's just put the value. Type 
percentage F, and then after the talking mark, press comma, and then slider dot value. The reason is percentage F is because the value slider returns is a float. Numbers can be returned in various ways. It could be an integer, which is a whole number, so one, two, three, no decimals. But since a slider can have a decimal value, it's a float. You don't really need to worry about what that means. And if you ever don't know what percentage to put inside here, in this case percentage F, just type percentage and then, for example, D. If you, you'll then get a warning saying that the type is invalid because that's a float and percentage D indicates an integer. And so you'll get an automatic fix it replace statement. Just double click on that and Xcode will fix it up for you. Let's run the application and see if it works. Click run in Xcode and wait for the iOS simulator to start up. You shouldn't be getting any errors. So once the iOS simulator starts up, what you'll see will happen is as we change the value of the slider, the text on the label will change to be the number which is actually the value of the slider. Let's try it out. So at the moment it's 50 and the value of the slider is 50. Let's click on the slider and you'll notice when I clicked on it I moved it slightly. So the value of the label also changed slightly. As I move it up and down, you'll see that the value on the label changes to match the value of the slider. You'll see that it does return a really high decimal value. So you're probably wondering, how do we get rid of this? Well, it's not too difficult. What we're going, what we are going to do is we're going to convert the float to an int. As I just mentioned, an integer cannot have any decimals, so by default Xcode will round up or round down the float, whatever it matches. So we need to change this code a bit. Let's delete this line of code here, and I'll zoom in, and we need to create a float. We'll call it float, and we'll call it the value float, and then type equals slider dot value, semicolon. We're just creating a float of the slider's value. Then we need to create our int, so type int, value int equals and then we do brackets int close brackets value float semicolon so that's converted this float here to an integer then we're going to display the int in the label so type label dot text equals ns string string with format as we did before but instead of doing percentage F, we're going to do percentage D, which is the formatting we use for an integer, and then type value int. Close the square brackets and put a semicolon. In case that wasn't clear, what percentage D does is it means that we can then display an int. If we wanted to display the float, we do percentage F. Let's run that application now. Stop the current build, obviously. And hopefully what will happen is the number will round to the nearest whole number. As you can see, it now does, and we've got a whole number, which is much neater. There are ways, if you want just one or two decimal places instead of four, to do that. And just Google it, and I will do a tutorial later on on how to do that. But for now, I'm not going to include that in this tutorial. So as you can see, we can easily adjust the value of our slider, and it'll round it to a whole number. As sliders, no matter what, have to be a float, because they have to have decimal places. Say we wanted to ha just return a number between 1 and 1,000 instead of 1 and 100. We just change the maximum to 1,000. We run the application now. Let's click stop. You'll notice the slider is no longer in the middle because the current value is still 50. And 50th, 1 50th of 1,000 is quite small. And you'll notice I can now go all the way up to 1,000. And the label's text will still manage that. There's one more thing you might want to do. You might want to, instead of just having the number type current colon 50 looks a bit neater so we've changed the text of the label but now if we run the application you'll notice that the label's text will say current 50 but as soon as we adjust the slider it'll go back to just a number to fix this go into our view controller dot m and before percentage d type current colon space percentage d is pretty much just in place of the integer the number so i can type anything around percentage d and the integer will be displayed in between current and high, for example. Let's run that again, and you'll see that it should all work well. Yep, and as you can see, current stays there. And the number still changes as we change the value of the slider. 
So you might want to use a slider for various things, and you might not want the value of the slider to be rounded to the nearest whole number, in which case, just delete the int value int. Let's just delete label.txt, and from here, you've got these two variables that you can use in your own application. If you've got an application you want a whole number, just use the number value int. If you've got an application where you're using a number with decimal points, then use value float as your, as your variable. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, so if you've got any questions, message us on YouTube, check us out on Facebook, or visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. The link's in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.